Sean Ryan from Huckabay here, and today we are going to be talking about the recent slash not so recent uh, Google announcement of their core algorithm update that's going to be happening in 2021. Now, to preface this, and this is how important it is, um, rarely does Google actually announce that they're going to have an algorithm update. But they did this uh, simply because they wanted to give webmasters time to make the needed adjustments to their websites so that they could prepare and be ready for when this big algorithm update hits. So that being said, let's get into what the algorithm change is actually and what it's about. So first thing this in this video, what we're going to be talking about is uh, the page speed, what it looks like as a ranking factor currently, what it's going to look like as a ranking factor in 2021, what are the 2021 core vitals that we're going to be looking at, how to measure those core vitals, what that algorithm update means for SEO, and then a couple of others, what we're going to do is we're going to look at how the page speed, which is what this algorithm is all about, affects your conversions and revenue. And then last but not least, and probably the most important, how to actually adjust those core vitals that are going to be affected by this algorithm update. So we're talking about algorithm updates here. And back in 2010, Google announced that they were absolutely, and this is quotes, they're obsessed with speed. So they doubled down on that and actually making it a ranking factor in 2018. So if your website was super, super slow, uh, chances are it would probably hurt your SEO and your rankings. And they're even doubling down more with this new algorithm update that's solely focused, well, not solely focused, but primarily focused on how fast your website runs and the user experience that comes with that speed and how fast it actually loads. So what are the core web vitals that Google is really focusing on? So they are mobile friendliness, safe browsing, uh, HTTPS, that's obviously having a secure website, no intrusive interstitials. Now an interstitial, if, no, if, if you don't know what that means, is simply something like a pop-up ad on your website. Now, if you have a pop-up where it's just requesting the user enter their email for a download or something like that, that's what a user would normally expect. But these ads that pop up or these interstitials that are intrusive and interrupt that browsing experience, chances are you won't necessarily get penalized for it, but it's not going to help your ranking. Uh, then we're going to deal with the largest contentful paint, the first input delay, and what we call cumulative layout shift. So LCP, largest contentful paint, FID, first input delay, cumulative layout shift, CLS. That's something, so keep those acronyms. If you're an SEO guy or webmaster or something like that, learn those acronyms, something new for the whole SEO industry. So one of the things that you can do to actually measure those core vitals is get into what we use as a specific tool. It's called Google PageSpeed Insights. So taking a look at Huckabye's website, or actually not Huckabye, but Vivint's website, and Vivint is a well-known uh, security camera, home alarm system, home automation, things like that. So here we have what we call core web vitals. First contentful paint, we mentioned that before. Largest contentful paint, first input delay, and cumulative layout shift. So those are the ones that you need to focus on. If they're longer than a certain specific time frame, if they take that long, uh, that that's going to actually really reduce the ranking of your website due to it not loading fast enough. So what is FCP, uh, first contentful paint? That's actually really easy to explain. It's the time from when someone actually hits like the go button to go to your website or clicks on a link or something like that to the time that it actually shows something from that specific page, whether it be an image or text or something, something to indicate that that page is actually loading on whatever device that you are trying to view it from, whether it's a PC, tablet, or, or phone. So first content paint, does that really matter? Yes, it does. You want that to be, you want that number and that load time to be as low as possible. So looking at the largest contentful paint, 
what are the time frames that you need to kind of focus on on this one? So largest contentful paint really, as opposed to like first content, first content paint, that largest content paint measures when page to page navigation is actually showing for a user when it's fully complete. And that's within the navigation of that website. So more technically, uh, LCP measures the render time of the largest image or text block visible within that specific viewport or dice or device. Okay, so the numbers that you want for largest contentful paint, you want it under 2.5 seconds. Anything between 2.5 and 4.0, that's considered, eh, you really need improvement for that. And then anything over four seconds is really, really bad. Okay, so that's FCP. Well, let's, let's look at FID, first input delay. First input delay, this is fairly simple as well. So if you have a web page on your cell phone and you tap on it, how long does it take from that tap to get to where it's pointing? That's what first input delay is. When it's actually just the delay of when that user in, inputs something, whether it's a mouse click or a tap on a cell phone. So another example of that is if it appears that a web page is actually done loading, but nothing is responsive when you actually click on it, that means that that page has a really, really high first input delay. So you want the input delay to be under 100 milliseconds for around three quarters of your website or 75% of your website. And we're going to usually these numbers with all of these other metrics, whether it's cumulative layout shift, first input delay, first contentful paint, the majority of your website needs to be very, very, very fast, at least three quarters or 75%. So uh, under 100 milliseconds for first input delay, that's good. Over 300 milliseconds, you'll probably want to indicate to someone that that needs to be fixed. So moving on to cumulative layout shift. Well, the best way to understand that is it's really, think of it as a metric that measures visual stability. Uh, when a web page is loading, sometimes it'll appear that the page is finished loading to any specific user. But when that user clicks a button and an ad pops up where they were supposed to click, then that's that's what your cumulative layout shift is. It's when your entire site is loading and in that process of loading, someone taps on it and they mistap or it directs them somewhere else where they didn't really intend to go. Uh, speed for cumulative layout shift, you want that under 0.1, so 0 0.1. If it's high, that's 0.25. You really don't want to be much higher than that. All right, so those are the new Core Web Vitals and what the target metrics should be for your website. Keep in mind, three quarters of it. But what does that mean for SEO? So at the beginning of the video, I mentioned that this is a really, really important algorithm update because Google not only announced it, but they want to give webmasters time to fix it. So how important is this really? We already know that page speed is, is a ranking factor. This is going to be more of a ranking factor, really, really high up there on um, the ranking scale, simply because it affects the usability of the website. Is it the only thing that you should be doing? Not necessarily. You still need to fo on, focus on meaningful content. So Martin Split, a developer over at Google, was asked that question. Is this the, is this the thing to do for SEO? And he said, absolutely not. You really want meaningful content on there because if Google goes in and says, hey, you have a fast website, but your content is crap and it's not engaging, yeah, you're not going to rank for it. So this is just something to focus more on. Okay, so what does this mean for conversions in revenue. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we're going to talk about how site speed actually affects conversions and revenue. So let's take a couple of numbers from some recent studies. And if you're on this article, we have links to these studies as well. So feel free to go visit those. Uh, although is a case study that has been completed. So pages that load in 2.4 seconds as on average had a 1.9% conversion rate. That's actually pretty good. 
And it doesn't drop below that when you're looking at 3.3 seconds where the conversion rate was 1.5. There's only a 0.4 difference there. So not that bad. But when you get into like 4.2 seconds, the conversion rate tanks. It goes less than number one. And then even at 5.7 seconds, it goes 0 0.0 or 0 0.6. So you can see how the speed actually does affect those. Um, really, really interesting case study too. I'll pull a couple more details and we'll talk about those here as well. Uh, longer page load times have a severe effect on bounce rates. Well, you kind of know that too. If it's not engaging to the customer, they're just going to bounce right out there. So uh, some of those metrics are if the page load time increases from just say like one to three seconds, your bounce rate will increase over 30%, 32% to be exact. If your page load time doubles that and it increases from one to six seconds, your bounce rate actually increases by 106%. That's some big numbers there. So this is where page speed actually comes into play. And especially if you're looking at increasing revenue or even fixing a de decrease in your bounce rate or your page load speed. Now, there is a relationship between First Contentful Paint and revenue. So that being said, on mobile per session, users who experienced fast re rendering times, they bring 75% more revenue than, than the average page load time. And then even 327% more than what a slow page would be. So average, faster. If you're faster than average, you're going to have 75% more. If you're faster than slow, you're going to have 327% more revenue. And this is just between the first contentful paint. That's remember going back to it. It's that first, first thing that the user sees when they go to your website. So that you could potentially see how that would actually hurt your business. So how do you actually improve those core web vitals? Well, first off, you have to have to identify them. And then after you identify them by using either page speed insights or Google search console, if you haven't connected your website to Google Search Console, that's going to be a, a main key because they have core web vitals and the core web vitals in Search Console really show you in depth on each specific page what you need to work on, whether it's a largest contentful paint or first contentful paint, anything on those lines. So make sure that your website is linked up to Search Console so you can start tracking those. And if it's not and you, you're, you're desperate, go to PageSpeed Insights and load that. The one thing to note with PageSpeed Insights is that it's a rolling 30-day period. So if you make a change on your website, you're not it's not going to be reflected in PageSpeed Insights for at least 28 to 30 days, somewhere in there. Uh, it's better to run that on, say, a local computer and do a PageSpeed test locally. Uh, okay, so now that you've identified the problems, how do you fix those? Well... That's where a developer comes in. If you have a developer come in, they're going to be able to do that, but they're only going to be able to do that page by page. So if you have a really, really large website, that's going to take a lot of time. And if you haven't started on it now, it's probably a good thing that you do. The other thing is, obviously, this is video for Huckabye. Huckabye has a page speed software that can take care of those issues, um, those speed issues right off the bat, and it'll handle every web, web page. In fact, if you want, you can actually assign a specific problematic area of your website and just have our software target that problematic area. So that being said, that's the core vitals. That's the Google algorithm update. Um, if you have any other questions, you can reach us through huckabye.com and the contact us page. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.